Okay, everyone. Today we're just doing a bit of a rundown on this Royce Rimfire kettle. It's a hot water kettle. Fire goes up through this tapered chamber here and creates a bit of larger surface area to heat the water. Uh, this one's a three litre one. They do come in one litre. They used to come in six litre ones, but no more, it's a one and three litre. You can see the tapered hole there. You might be able to see my eye. Let's have a look in there. You should be able to see that. Okay, I've had this one for about 10 years. I will fire it up in a minute, just bear with me here. And it comes with a steel ring. And you can see it, this is where you actually light the fire in here. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll light the fire up in a minute. We'll do a bit of testing there. But basically, when you're transporting it, it goes that way. But when you want to fire it up, you put the fire in here. Now there is some tarnish spots on here. I, I ran over with this some steel wool because it has been sitting in an environment with salt air for about 10 years under a house. I actually forgot I had it. I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it's 304 stainless or 316 stainless. The handle here, that's rusted from the salt air, but everything else is, is fared well. See, it's got a little cap there. It doesn't whistle. It's just a purely a cap for the reservoir. There's a little damper that goes on top. We'll try that out soon. I do apologize. The bellbirds are a little bit noisy here once again. Okay, I brought my own wood today. And we'll fire this up. We're gonna try and boil up three cups of water. We'll see how long that takes to boil roughly. Nothing's just all approximate. And then we'll boil through, see how long it takes to boil three liters of water. But what I might get do is get this fire going and I wouldn't mind trying to, I've got to heat up some fried rice for lunch, leftover fried rice. So I'm going to try and um, cook on this, just put a couple of bits of timber across there possibly and heat up the fry pan. I brought all this timber from home. Couple of bits of hardwood there. Yeah, I hope you don't mind me cooking while we're doing this video. I've just got some fried rice I made the other night. It needs to be used up. Like I said before, if I don't eat now, I'll forget to eat. I've got the hillbilly trusty fry pan, my old time favourite. That you can see some ginger in there, yummy ginger. That you can see the firing up it's nice so just bear with me we'll get to boiling the water in a minute good on your Royce rim fire so effectively you could use it as a bit of a partial stove there if you really wanted to uh, you could probably make a more permanent pot stand that could go over that but this is really dense hardwood here so that'll last a while it won't burn through in the time that I need it I was going to get the snow peak gas stove out but I saw a flame and took advantage of it Take these off. While we wait for that fire to build up again, to be fair to the boil time, this is three cups of water in here. So I'm going to pour three cups in here. Try not to spill too much. Like I said, it's only going to be a rough time. I will time it, but it's quite a, a warm ambient day today. So my other tests were when it's really cold. Let's clip that back on there. But I'm just going to build the fire up a bit more yet. We'll get it going like it was before. Okay, I'll put three cups of water in here and let's stick it on. As you can see, there's the timer going. We'll see how it goes. If you wanted to, I can sort of, you can see that. The channeling of the flame there it's almost like a rocket stove not a rocket stove but you can see the heat coming out of there but you can i don't know if you can hear that sound see the flame coming out the top so we're at the minute mark at present and there's a lot of noise coming out of there but impressive isn't it very impressive I can stoke it underneath here, like so, throw it in there. Once the kettle's on there, you can feed all sorts of stuff in the top of it. Dried bits of lantana, which I absolutely hate. It's at the minute 146, nearly two minute mark now, as you can see there. 
It's just about boiled actually. Yeah, that's boiling now. So about two minutes 40, nearly three minutes to boil. It's quite a hot day once again, but that's boiling away there. So about three minutes to boil three cups of water. Like I said, really I should have bought the one litre one. And what you've got to be careful of is you don't want to lift it off because that's going to heat the handle up. You're going to burn it. So that's the beauty of this thing here. Put that there, protects your knuckles. And now I can lift it off like so. Anyway, I'm going to let that, put that aside, let it cool down. And then we'll, we'll fill it up with three litres and see how long it takes to boil. Anyway, I'm just looking down the hole from a distance. And I can see in the middle we could probably do a bit more timber in there. I don't know if I can get the camera down there to have a look. See it's the fire in there, you can see it's sort of getting focused up the chimney. It's basically a chimney effect. We're at the five minute mark. The water is hot to touch, not boiling as yet. I have used this on a stove at home, on a gas stove at home with a quite a, like a wok burner. But it wasn't very efficient at all. Uh, so it's really only really, I find it's only really suited for a uh, wood fire, like its intended purposes here. It's starting to boil at the seven minute mark. It's about seven minutes to boil three litres of water. So anywhere, I would assume anywhere between, you've got to allow for the ambient temperature here. But it's starting to boil over now, anywhere between seven and nine minutes, give or take. Now let's see if I can get this thing off without gloves. So probably the first thing to do is put the baffle on, like so. Put that on there so I don't burn my hands. This is still cold to touch and lift that off. So yeah, no gloves as you can see. Just make sure you put that baffle on to stop the flame shooting up, like up the chimney. But I need to do the dishes. All the I'll just put some detergent in here. Let's see if I can pour this without burning myself, without gloves, of course. And as you can see, there's a handle here, which is, it's cool to touch at present. Just gotta make sure I don't burn myself. That's boiling hot water. Probably wouldn't normally do this, but because I'm on camera, I'm a little bit awkward. So got some nice hot water there. One thing you gotta be careful of too is just obviously, the obvious is don't boil it dry for obvious reasons. So basically you've got a fire ring here now, you can have a little fire in it just to contain the fire. Uh, use less, wo less wood. It's quite a warm day today, so I don't need a raging fire. I suppose you're wondering why, yeah, why I don't use it. Well, basically I bought it and forgot all about it. And given its size, uh, in hindsight, I should have bought the one litre kettle. Anyway, I will leave a, a link in the description. I bought this with my own money, like I said earlier, many, many years ago. But it was just something I had laying around that I'd forgotten all about. Because when I was using it before, once that, once you put it on top there and it channels all the heat and the, the, the flames and the smoke, it's quite a clean burn. It's only when you tend to take it off that you'll get a bit of smoke. Ideally, I think this would be good for a, if you had a weekend getaway and you could just store it somewhere instead of having to carry it with you. This fire ring is a little bit fragile because it is only thin tin. So if you were to stand on it, you would bend it. But usually the ring is sitting on the, on the actual kettle, which helps protect it a little bit. But even just to use as a fire ring, it's pretty good. That's the dishes done. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.